What's up guys, it's uh, Andrew here. I'm gonna be uh, giving some more tips on how to get better at uh, gunfighting on Roblox, specifically for my boys in TNIC. Um, the first number one that a lot of people have issues with is just common uh, peaks and just like basic game sense. Now they're talking about really in raids, but just in general, in game, knowing when to peak and all that stuff. And honestly, the best thing I could say you get better at that is going to be uh, just attending a lot of events and going to places like belt grounds where people are like you know actively pop shotting and all that so you can get used to how people are playing now a lot of people here that are good really kind of just hold w on this map on these maps and they just like don't really try but if you're trying to get better then don't treat it like that just like Try your best to like stay alive and get as many kills as possible. Be like a super annoying person. Like that's how you're gonna get better at this game. Like treating things like if they're real deals. And then on top of that, uh, like I said, attending just the pure amount of events. The more events you attend, the better your game sense is gonna get because you're gonna find ways to like figure out why you're dying. Like look at look at why you're dying and try like different ways to figure out like how to prevent yourself from that happening again. So typically it's like over peaking, like you're peaking out way too wide, like just knowing not to peak when you're low HP. Just like standard combat discipline is uh, probably the main thing I'd say uh, to get better at your uh, basic game sense. All right, so next up what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to mouse settings. This is specifically for Windows users. Um, you're gonna type in mouse into the bottom there, additional mouse options, go to pointer options. Now this here is what a lot of people use. You hope people say six out of 11, five out of 11, all that. That's where you find this. You go to buttons, pointer options, mouse, additional mouse options, and uh, pointer options here. Six out of 11 is the default, it's right in the middle. It's what most people use. Some people do go uh, lower. Some people play all the way down to three. I personally like six. Some people even play it on seven. It's all preference. I'd say the most common is six or five though. So either here or here, but six is probably the most common. And then also you're gonna wanna make sure that your enhanced pointer position is checked off, off. And the reason why you want that button off is so that uh, it's not uh, screwing with your uh, precision. Basically what enhanced pointer precision does is it bases it off of uh, the speed at which you move your mouse and not actually like how far you move your mouse. So if I move my mouse 10 pixels to the right really fast, uh, not 10 pixels, if I move my mouse 10 inches to the right really fast, and then I move my mouse 10 inches to the right really slow, my mouse will go like different, completely different lengths. So here, I'll show an example here. I just turned it on, it's on right now. I'm gonna start here at this line and I'm gonna move it across my entire mouse pad, starting very slow. So it barely reached the other side of my screen and now I'm going to do the same thing except fast and my mouse is only halfway across the entire pad. I'm barely moving my mouse it just flicks all the way over there. That will never happen with this off. This, I move my mouse the same distance, it goes the same distance every single time. This is still going to be the same as this, if that makes sense. So your, your mouse will travel the same exact space, uh, pixels at, uh, for the same distance that you move your mouse, which will make your aim a lot more precise. So you want that setting off. So again, mouse, additional mouse options, pointer options, turn that shit off. That's like a huge thing. And then obviously you wanna screw with your DPI a bit. I use Razer, so I was up in my Razer Synapse. Uh, you're gonna want to, if you have Razer, you get a performance. I do have G Hub, it's for my uh, Pro, but I don't have my mouse plugged in. It would be here, same exact way. You're just gonna want to mess with your settings. I use 350 right now. The most common DPI settings are gonna be 250, 400, and 800. Now, people have DPIs all over the place. Some people play on 650, 600, 550, 500. The most popular are going to be 250, 400, and 800. 
400 probably being the most popular out of them all, and then probably 800 and then 250. Just really depends on how uh, much you like moving your mouse. And then they also do that with different combinations with those mouse options, like I thought I said. So this is obviously Windows. So this is what the Windows calculations are doing. And this is what uh, each of what your mouse is doing. Um, so some people play 5 out of 11, 800 DPI. Some people play 6 out of 11, 250 DPI. They're pretty similar. It just depends on all the different mashups that you're doing. Just find what works for you the best. Um, uh, also, to get your aim better, you can try out different uh, bot places. Uh, personally, I don't I don't recommend bot aim places unless you're training in correct ways. So I'm actually going to join Bot Emma here since that's probably the most popular right now. And I'm gonna explain uh, why I think that bot Emma is good in some ways and why it's bad in some ways. So with bot Emma, uh, let me get some cursors up here. Ah shit. Yeah, let's get the. Uh, let's use just green dot for this one. So why I think bot Emma can be helpful is it can help you with your tracking. It will, it's pretty beneficial for tracking. Only if uh, if you're practicing in the right way. You'll see plenty of people uh, on YouTube and shit, like just going up to this wall or whatever, just aiming at the bot, right? Because it hits less shots or whatever and it allows you to hit more shots. Don't do this, guys. <laughs> Don't do this. This is not gonna help you in raids and defenses. This is, if you ever have an angle like this, it's one in fucking 300. Like, it's very, 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 very rare that you're gonna have an angle exactly like this. This is just to kill bots at very high rates. They're just trying to, like, set records here. They're trying to 11 out of the bot on 100%. Whatever. Alright, if you want to practice, practice angles that you're actually gonna be using in raids and defenses. So... I always usually go right behind my character, maybe slightly to the right, slightly to the left. So I'll practice a little bit on the left. I'll do like, you know, maybe 10 of these and then I'll rotate over to the right side and I'll do the same exact thing. And then maybe I'll do some in the middle in case I was ever, if I ever had my cam camera sensor in the middle. And I just practice like that. I also practice the different ranges. So like, you know, CQC. I'll go in here and I'll practice my CQC and my LQC. Um, uh, probably MQC the most. That's what I, I recommend that because this is probably the range. Uh, it's probably the range that you're going to be using the most. Um, but if you if you know you're struggling in some area, practice more in that area. Like you know, like it doesn't it doesn't hurt to do this. This is a uh, pretty beneficial. Bot Emma is good in that way. Just, you just have to practice with angles that you're actually going to be using. Don't practice with angles that you're not going to be using. Because it's not beneficial at all. On top of that, Bot Emma does also have these hit markers that... And especially if you're practicing on RCL. RCL doesn't have hit markers. Unless you're like at like trick stops, I guess. And it's got like the little things coming out of it. But like, usually in RCL tournaments and stuff, there's no hit markers. There's no damage things coming off this, out of the people. Like, it's all aim. So if, when the, when they come out with a way to turn these hit markers off, I highly recommend turning them off. Like, because you're going to aim a lot better with them on than you are with them off. And if you could get really good with them off, then you're going to be extremely good with them on. So, uh, it is very beneficial in this way. But uh, yes, I do recommend bots. Uh, you know, as long as you can, the the longer you can practice, the better, obviously. And longer sessions are always better than shorter sessions. So if you could go six hours one, not well, six hours is like unrealistic. But if you could go six hours one day of practicing on bots, that's way better than two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours. Like it's just better for your muscle memory. Um, what else did I want to talk about? Um, there's also zombie aim training, of course. I don't know if I have this in my experiences or not. Where that pops up. Yeah, so it's zombie aim challenge here, can dog. Um 
This is another good one. Practicing your aim. Just overall pretty decent ways. Don't, like I said, there are ways to cheat this game to get way better quicker in it, right? People get really high times like with these wacky camera angles that allow them to hit more shots. When, when are you going to use this angle? Ever. You're never going to use these angles. Only use the angles that are going to be beneficial for you in the raids and defenses. Like, people that are doing like Greenland spars and they have these wacky ass angles that allow them to hit more shots. Like, those, that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you in raids and defenses. That's not going to help you in tournaments unless you're like in a 1v1 scenario. You're going to want to be practicing with the angles that you're going to be seeing all the time. Okay, so get your cameras in, in uh, positions to where you can make that happen. And uh, it's going to be a lot more beneficial. Oh yeah, and I forgot to say earlier with these uh, the window speed, if you don't have a mouse that has a DPI changer, um, then the window speed, the 6 out of 11 stuff, that stuff is very, very, very beneficial for you. Uh, turning that down maybe to like 4 out of 11, because I know like starting DPIs are extremely high for mouses that don't have DPI settings. So like turning that down to like to like four out of eleven may actually almost replicate a lower DPI setting, and it will help you aim a lot better. So I'm not gonna stay here longer than two minutes, but I just wanted to show an example of what things you could do to uh, get better. All right, and then I'm gonna have two more things that I'm gonna show. And uh, I'm sure there's other ways that you can train your aim to get better, but uh, these are just the ways that I use the most. I did a lot of time on zombie challenge, farming bots, like... Overall, just all those things. And of course, sparring people. Spar people that are better than you, but spar people that are in your skill range. Um, sparring against people that are gonna kill you in like 0.5 seconds is not gonna be helpful. You're gonna like start shooting them and you're gonna be dead already, like... Spar people that are around your skill range so that you can actually get more practice in aiming and shooting and all that. But you also want to spar people that are slightly better than you so you can take uh, different like strategies and stuff that they're doing and uh, implement it into your own. And you can also watch good people, which is what I did a lot of times. Just watch good people, see what they're doing, try to take strategies from them. You see them make a good play on someone, like copy that. Like you don't have to make up your own strategies. like. You could take strategies of things that work, like don't change it if it works, you know? Alright, then the last few things that I want to show are going to be the aim booster and uh, aim, aim 400 kg. I do think aim booster has some benefits. Um... I think it helps with flicking, so your initial flick onto a person, I think it's pretty beneficial in that sense. But in terms of tracking and stuff, which is mostly what you're doing on Roblox, it's probably not going to be that useful. But also, like in uh, FPS games and whatnot, this is what aim booster is uh, pretty helpful for, like, just getting those flicks onto different people. That's why this thing is the thing. It's mostly for FPS games. But, uh... But um, it can be extremely useful for your flicks, getting those initial flicks onto someone, you know, like split second differences of flicks can make a difference. And I also use this to adjust my DPI sometimes. So if I'm looking for a change in DPI, I could use aim booster and um, see uh, how I need to adjust my DPI. So for example, if I'm like overshooting, if I'm overshooting a lot of my targets, then I'll change it and I'll make it lower. But if I'm undershooting them, then I'll make it higher, if that makes sense. And then obviously, aim 400 kg. Practice the tracking ones. Hard tracking, tracking medium. Those are what's gonna help you here. Tracking medium, probably more than tracking hard. Uh, just keeping your cursor. I use a dot because that's what I use on Roblox. Just keeping your cursor over this and just practicing. This is gonna help you on Roblox a lot. 
like this is basically what you're doing on Roblox, keeping your cursor right over this, and it's super beneficial. But uh, I think the most beneficial thing is probably going to be sparring people. People that spar a lot get really good aim-wise really fast. And then game sense-wise, belt grounds, just going to events. Like, the more you raid, the better you're going to get. And also watch people that raid. Like, watch their videos. Like, people post videos for you for a reason. Like, you could watch those and it's like super beneficial. Like, take what they're doing. Take the good that they're doing. Take the bad that they're doing. Get rid of the bad. Do the good. Um, that's basically all that I have to say. Um, if you have any other questions, you can always DM me, Andrew, uh, hashtag 2000. Um, but that's about it. Um, peace.